Tom E.R. to the streets every Monday night, 9 to midnight. We have a very special guest in the house, Brick City Zone Heathen. What's going on, man? How you been, brother? You already. Yeah, I'm glad to have you back in the building. You know what I mean? We up in here. Yeah, so now, what's been going on in your world, H? Man, just grizzly, grizzly like crazy. Um, You know, got a new situation with my with my home team. You know, can't really speak on it yet because the ink still isn't dry, but going to be dropping my debut album next year sometime. Okay. Um, working on the head trip still. You know, I've been working on it for two years, but I want to perfect it before dropping it. And me and Ill Cosby's project is about to drop soon also. Okay, you got a lot of big, good people you're working with. Yeah. But my th- my next question to you is that, I'm, do you have any guest spots on your new up-and-coming album coming out? Um, on on the project with Ill Cosby, I got my homie Elder Sensei, of course, my man Drama J from VA, and my man B. Dunn, he's also from VA, so okay. that's, that's the only features. And I honestly think an album is better that way when you only have, like, maybe a few features. When you have, like, a... You see some out there have everybody's featured. You don't really get to hear the artist shine like he should. Yeah, it sound like it sound like it's just like a producer's album, like a DJ Khaled. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, that's what people want to do, not knocking it, but hey. But now, like I said, I mean, coming from out of Newark, I know and like as you said with the whole hip hop scene out here, as I was just as I was ex- as I was talking to you before, my thing with it, do you see a rise in somebody? Who do you think would be the next big thing from what you can see, other than yourself? Do you see anybody else really shining, like making songs creatively? Coming out of Newark, besides, yeah. besides my team, um, yeah. it's a group called Benetton that I think they real dope. Um, it's a singer that's really dope. Man, his name DJ. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he's, he's hip hop, but he sings, and he's, he's super dope. Um, my man Future. Which it's not the it's not the ATL rapper. <laughs> it's my man Future. Um, mm-hmm. And who else? Um, Nico. Nico's doing his thing too right now. Okay. He got a he got a situation with Wiz Khalifa, so he alright. Hey, that's how we go. Nothing wrong yeah, with that. Right now. So, what sort of things do you find yourself doing outside the music world? Is there anything you really you really into other than the music? Basketball. Okay. And, and cracking jokes. Yeah, I tell you. Now you got the now you got the Brooklyn Nets. I'm be I'm be, I'm be hitting up a few games, me in the Barclays Center. I'm not supporting. <laughs> and they and they actually thought it was okay to give us the New York Liberty. That kind of messed me up. It's like that's not a good trade. Like where's Don Imus at? Man, man, that's yeah, how the game goes. They gave, goes. Us, they gave us my, the women. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but my thing with it though, H, is that when I I see you're very much into writing songs, they're very creative, like the idiot box. Yeah. And I like how you were able like, to have it as a, all TV shows. You made it very creative and very, and even and had people like, wow, this is dope. And for the knack for songwriting, where does that come from? That it, Was that just something like you decided just to, you know, I'm going to sit down and just write and just keep writing until I get good? Or is it just like, I'm going to just rap for the fun of it? Or what made you want to get into the rap game? I started off with poetry. And then basically rap is poetry over a beat. But um, I started off with poetry and... I was trying to like the little poetry slams and everything. It worked out, but some of the songs were just a little too complex. So it's like it was going over a lot of people's heads. Like still, Idiot Box still goes over a lot of people's heads. Mm-hmm. And I got a song called Just a Game, where it's just all about freaking video games, um, catch a girl, get a girl. It's all stuff, but it's put into you know story format, and it goes over a lot of people's heads too. I understand where you're coming from with with all, with all of that, but as I said, I'm looking forward to hearing your new to, for your new album to come out. And I know you have a lot of you have your in-house production, but do you have any other producers you might have taken from out out of house you're gonna try to work with? Yeah, um, right. Well, for my debut album, I know I know Drone is on there, of course, because he's the in-house. We got my man Ill Cosby gonna be on there. Um, the Young Stars they did um, a beat on Currency's album. They actually have the best beat on Currency album. Mm-hmm. They're um, 18 and 15. Okay. And it's, they're stupid. Um, my man Marcus Detroit and Jersey the Fat Man. Mm-hmm. So, so what experience have you learned from B? Because from you've been in the game quite some time now. When I say that, because you knew what it was to be signed to a major label yeah. and now to go to the independent route. What, what lessons and experiences have you learned from that? Have a good team around you. Um, watch it. All, even though you have a good team around, you still watch everybody because I thought I had a good team when I was on a major and 
actually didn't watch everyone, and then, you know, I wound up getting stabbed in the back. But, you know, I learned from my lessons, and I think it actually indie is better. Mm. You know, a lot of people are winning with indies. Right. And I must say, the way your voice is over a beat, it sounds very, like, direct and assertive. And where does that, does that make it, is that a blessing and a curse? Because when you, because when I say that, when you have conversation, that's the way you rhyme, that's the way you sound when you rhyme. And for some people, they say that, oh, it's a swagger, it's a this or that. Because you have some people, when they're having a conversation with them, yeah. when you hear them rhyme, it sounds like a totally different person. Like, the voice is the same, but, like, it's a different thing. Like, you, when you rhyme... They turn it off and on. Yeah. Easily. Like, you, it's basically like, it's you all the time. Where does yeah. that come from? Is that just... Is that just you're trying to... Is that you're just being you, or is it that... Uh, because many people say with that whole swag and stuff, it comes from... It's them, but it's just as part of them when they rap. Not the... Um, honestly... When I first when I first started mm-hmm. rhyming, like my voice was weak. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. horrible. I ain't even gonna lie. It was weak, and a lot of people would just like even Elder Sensei to this day. He would he used to be like, "Yo, I remember when you first started rhyming, your voice was you was dope, but your voice didn't it didn't capture anyone." And he would just, just be like, "Yo, just get just get mad, just put some anger in between it." He was like, "You you spitting like you don't care," and you know now it's like. I guess I grew into my voice. I feel a little better now. So you say L helped you helped helped influence yeah. you in a certain way. He crafted he like he craft he helped craft who he even is. You know like mm-hmm. he helped me freaking learn how to count bars. Um, you know format songs, write hooks, everything. You know he told me a lot. And then I know you said you used to promote used to rhyme at the remote lounge and some yeah. of these different venues in the city. What would you say was a real high point in your career where you were like, wow, like. This is really could, could this could come true. This is coming great for me. Um, I say when I was just when I was when I was signed, you know that was that was like a good thing, and I was actually working on my debut, mm-hmm. you know, and that felt great because it said it felt like the whole place was behind you, you know, you got all these big producers sending you beats, and you're not knowing what they what they want for them. You're just like, oh shoot, I got a beat from such and such. I'm about to go nuts. That was that was the high point for me. Okay. And I see you have a wedding band on. So my and when I so being that since so be, being a father and be, having a wife, do you find it difficult to balance that in the rap game, or does it make it or the or do you find because you have some <coughs> sorry something in my throat. You have some people who say that who said that now nah, I got the family now I don't feel I can't rap anymore I don't know and I don't want to hit the studio. How do you feel about that? Um, I actually. What's, what's good about it now is like I have my own studio mm-hmm. so that's a great thing and my wife actually helped me build it from the ground up and paint it get all the equipment and everything um, so she's she's like my number one supporter beside my children um, it's it's still the same with me you know it's easy you know I just I don't do any disrespectful women in hip hop because I have a daughter and I also have a wife so I don't do you know strip club songs that wasn't me in the first place anyway but mm-hmm. I don't do strip club music I don't do a song about you don't, you know, you don't female. You, bands will make her dance you don't do that nah, <laughs> that's, not, that's not me I'd rather I'd rather keep my bands in my pocket I feel I'm, you man you work off because we're in a recession right, bro exactly. I've been in a recession since I was born All right. <laughs> But yeah, but I want to say thank you for coming through. And uh, like I said, never be a stranger. Always come back right. to Into the Street Show. Definitely Whenever you got that ready, fire, man. you know. Hey, next time you're doing a mixtape, Into the Streets wouldn't mind hosting it. Oh, it's uh, nothing. That ain't no problem right there. All right. Well, Into the Streets every Monday night, 9 to midnight. We got Heathen in the building. You know what I mean? We up in here every Monday. You know, about to get some more of that blazing flavor. Yes, sir.